Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Today we're going to be doing some L formations and we're going to be doing it in a cruise missile raven. The reason I wanted to do this is because that I'm quite curious on how the raven does in L formations. As far as I can tell it should do just like a bit of a lower tier than a golem. But the reason is that I see a lot of people, a lot of people both on the Evo Online forums, Reddit sometimes and YouTube comments saying, oh, I'm working towards getting my Raven for Elf missions, my Raven for Elf missions. I hear a lot of people when they're starting out Elf missions and going for a Raven. And in a way, it makes quite a bit of sense because the Raven is, you know, not an extremely expensive battleship. There are cheap battleships, such as a Praxis, for example. Praxis, no, Praxis. Uh, I think the Praxis is probably a, what, the best starter L4 mission because of how cheap it is, but also because of how low skill requirements it has. But the thing is that Raven is also pretty good because it has good missile bonuses, and missiles in general are pretty good for the L4 missions when it comes to the large ones, like cruise missiles, because they can hit out really far. They're going to be able to hit everything you find. There's nothing you're not going to be able to hit at these sites. So that's why I think that it could be a good option. I wanted to see what is the... Uh, what people have seen in the Raven that I haven't, because I actually have never used a Raven for L4 missions before. I have tried a Raven for Triglavin hunting, but not L4 missions, so we're going to test this out. We are using an Omega clone, my main character, because you can only do L4 missions in an Omega clone. Otherwise, it would be cool to explore Alpha clone uh, L4 mission fits, but the problem is Alpha clones, they can't do L4 missions, so it's not really uh, a thing. It's, you can't really do that. It used to be that you could actually do L4 missions as an Alpha clone once upon a time i think it was 2019 they made the change i think the reason was because that they were like bots because elf missions in general are very sit like they're very static they're almost always the same very easy to plan them out and that you can do them in higher sec and they're a decent amount of income especially if you do them as much as you want and you can do them in very like cheap ships so you don't have to use very expensive ships to do them i think that there, there were quite a few botters who did them uh, that contributed to them uh, being removed from the alpha clone status since you could just make unlimited amount of alpha clones and then being able to do as many missions as possible okay let's go to the system of forent and authorize military presence we have to drop off these militants let's get them okay 3599 loyalty points i mean it's going to be a medium-sized mission it's not going to be a crazy big mission but it's going to be a medium-sized one okay let's go to the next system Basically, this is just a case of rescuing these militants. I don't think we have to destroy everything. We can test out the acceleration gates because I think this might be one of those missions where uh, a lot of the acceleration gates are unlocked. You can see here, now it gets angels. And that's one great thing about the Raven is that since we're using missiles and it also gets bonuses to all types of missiles, we can use the optimal damage types as explosive here and still have the same damage. It's not like, oh, bonus to kinetic missile. So they're only going to be good. Like We're only going to do optimal damage against, say, Garistas or Serpentis. Here we can use the good damage types all the time. And we get some pretty decent volleys as well. Decent application we've got going on. Oh, and actually, I don't have drones. And that's also a good thing about the Raven is that you can use drones. Five uh, medium drones is possible. Okay, that is uh, something that I should have definitely done. We could do five Vespa 2s would be a very good... Uh, I think that would be a very good uh, set of drones. Because they're very powerful drones. They've got big shields, good range on them. Uh, and they're also Kaldari, so it matches with the ship. It makes a lot of sense to use Vesper drones in a Kaldari based ship. Okay, so the militants, I think they're supposed to be near one of these wrecks. I can check. But to be honest, I don't even need to wait for me to check because the Raven has such a good range, I can just start shooting straight away. So even while I'm just looking at which wave we have to destroy to get this done as quick as possible, we can always just check. In the pocket, destroy the group by the shuttle wreck. The one that has transport ships okay so if we look in large collidable objects this is uh, an overview tab i've made you can always just like right click and then add large collidable object to overview instead of remove it says remove because i've already added it so let's see now shuttle wreck space shuttle wreck where is this okay it's over here okay so it's this group it makes a lot of sense we have to destroy because i think the personal transport's over there yeah, so this is actually, I can see why people like this, because these cruise missiles, they have as the unlimited range, not unlimited range, but basically near unlimited range, because anything we can see, we can hit, and we can actually hit further out than we can even lock up. So we are actually, uh, we've got an extreme amount of range, 
and it's also pretty s simple with the application just two target painters and just that's it uh, we don't have to worry about any kind of transversal transversal or anything like that we've got a regal catalyst to improve application uh, even more and the good thing about l missions also is that you are up against a lot of battleships so you are going to not uh, struggle too much with application occasionally you will have some small frigates and destroyers not the destroyers crews maybe that will have a hard time applying to what i'd do is then uh, switch over to the Kaldari Navy variant of ammunition and then use the drones. Now I don't have my drones, so that was silly of me, but uh, it should be all right, even though we don't have drones, just go a little bit slower. Uh, we can check which is the personal transport we have to take out. There it is Angel Cartel personal transport. So we'll go around, and I'm surprised. Whoa, the speed of this ship actually 1k a second with this uh, MWD on, and it's a uh, quad LIF. We have got pretty decent skills, not got any implants in, but uh, it is a pretty decent speed. I'm happy about that, and I don't need to use my shield booster. This ship, I think, is cap stable with, without the, yeah, it's cap stable with the MWD, so we can leave, leave on unlimited amount of time. And then we're also almost cap stable when we don't have the MWD on in terms of our tank. So it's a good uh, balance between uh, speed and tank. I think we've got, this is just a Dread Garista's last shield booster. It's not extremely expensive, but it's, Still better than your normal uh, large shield boosters, uh, and uh, like a tech two is better than that. Uh, it's not an extra large one, but it's a large one. It still gives a decent amount of tank, and it's not like you need a whole lot of tank in the L4 missions. And the Raven, since we've got so good range, I'm thinking that we don't need to focus too much on tank because we're anyway going to be kiting a lot of the time. You see here, we're keeping such a long range, they cannot hit us. And that's great because our cruise missiles are able to hit out our limited range, basically. Okay. And then we've also got dual multi-spectral shield hardeners, so we're like we've got really good resist just by default. So even our passive region is going to be contributing somewhat to our tank. Okay, uh, the Angel Cartel personal transport wreck is over there. Oh, now this is a bit unfortunate what I did here because uh, now I've mixed up the waves a bit. So probably we'll have to. Where is the personal transport wreck? There it is. We can go to that. Because now that we've mixed up the waves, probably we'll have to destroy the entire wave, and that's going to make it so that uh, we'll have to destroy more NPCs than we actually have to. Let's go to this one. A cruise there with our MWD. We need to turn that on, don't keep it off. I'm surprised how dis like, quickly we take out these cruisers. Even though we're against cruisers, our Fury missiles or our cruise missiles, they're applying very nicely. That's good to see. We can sort by distance. Okay, we've got a bunch of frigates uh, approaching us. Uh, we can take out the uh, the cruisers because they're going to be doing more damage than the frigate. Uh, okay, you go for this defeater. Yeah, it's just a bunch of frigates there nearby. So they they the main thing about them is that they'll probably webify us. That's going to be annoying because we won't be able to pull range from the rest of the groups. But I think we'll do all right. We just need to use our shield booster a bit. Okay, great. Uh, okay, we've got more NPCs inbound. Let's grab this personnel transport. We can stop locking up these frigates because they're not doing much damage. It's mainly the cruisers and bow cruisers, the, the bow ships that are going to be doing anything significant to us. We've got the militants. Okay, great. Now we just want to pull range get out of range so we can be at a safe distance i mean if we wanted to if we did we wanted to, it would take longer we could just obviously keep a range where we were before you know we were at a safe distance over there so we could have just kept our distance and it would have been uh, fine we would have not had to even take this half shield damage that we've got it says we need say it says we it says we need uh 10 militants in our cargo hold but it's still not saying the mission is done and that's because we have to take out the waves that are here uh, it's very difficult considering that they're all mixed up but I don't think it's going to be much of a problem because the Raven is so powerful, it seems. So powerful. So I can definitely see why people like to use this as the Elf mission boats. I'm quite curious because you've got 785 DPS. I wonder what Praxis can achieve with uh, this similar uh, configuration. Because I've got also a, a cruise missile uh, Praxis. It's got 736 DPS, okay. And then 200 with the drones we would uh, obviously have more damage if we were to have drones equipped uh the practice here has all right hp per second we have how much it was 78 so a similar similar amount of uh, hp per second and uh, i think that the raven does have some application bonuses does it have 
max velocity. So it's good to have more velocity bonuses actually, because when we're sniping, if the missiles take a long time to travel to the target, then we're just going to have to shoot and then wait, wait, wait. Then there, now it's hit. But now we've got a velocity bonus. That wait time is going to be a lot slower, or a lot. That wait time is going to be a lot quicker. Okay, we can just chill here for a bit because we are a safe distance, so we don't have to worry too much. We're taking the occasional hit from one of these battleships, but it's okay. The further we go away, the longer time it will take to, for our cruise missiles to hit, so we're not really getting any benefit of being too far away. In fact, it's more like a downside. But this feels really great. It's a cheap battleship, and it does this really smoothly. This is just one of the miss elf missions that you can get. There's a bunch more that you can have. But I like this, I like this. I can definitely see why a lot of people like to use this. And I can imagine if you use the Raven Navy issue, or the Raven, uh, the faction-based variant. Is it called Navy issue or State issue? I think it's the Navy issue. You could get a lot better DPS with that. Okay, because there is something called Raven State issue. That is one of the very extreme DPS ships in the game, actually. It's a AT ship. This is not something normal people will be able to buy because this is just this costs probably I don't even think anyone, even if they got unlimited money, could buy it because I don't know if these exist in the game right now because these are like a limited edition or limited amount of these ships were released and then they were uh, given to the prizes of these people who won this AT tournament. And they could have been destroyed. And if something gets destroyed in Eve Online, it's destroyed forever. It's not like it's going to be respawning or anything like that. But we can check what kind of DPS we would get. We can go with this and Scrooge Fury. 633 DPS without any damage much at all. And then you just add some ballistic ballistic control systems. Kaldari Navy. 1.1k wolf. It's not, uh, I mean a Marauder will do more than that. But it's still pretty high considering it's not using any Bastion module or anything like that. Vesper 2. We would probably put 5 Vesper 2s in here. Uh, Vesper 2s. Just save the fit so it's at a uh, optimal uh, configuration and then we could perhaps put some acolyte twos uh, some like, you know some extra little light drones i sometimes like to have salvage drones but i very rarely salvage as an l4 mission runner so i think that some extra light drones of a different damage type can actually benefit us quite a bit so raven raven l4 uh, raven l4 sniper I'm thinking, is there any improvements you guys can think to this fit? Because something I'm thinking of is that instead of using these shield flux core or the capacitor flux cores, they're very nice because they improve our capacitor, uh, like our capacitor stability substantially. Like we're able to use our MWD a lot more with this. I mean, we can use it; it's still cap stable. We can use the shield booster a lot more. That seven minutes to three minutes. So There's a big difference, but. What we could do is we could add something like a damage control. A damage control would be good because it will provide extra bonuses to you know, our tank so that our shield boosting is more effective. So even though we're not able to shield boost as much, each shield boost cycle you could think is more effective because we've got more resistance. But it's not going to be that much. Uh, it's not like it's going to be... It's, it's a slight increase in resist. Well, actually it is pretty significant, 48 to 54%. Uh, but then I don't know. Would this be good? Would this not be good? I'm not sure. Maybe maybe it could be an option because it feels nice to have damage control because you get that extra buffer and extra tank just in case. So you can always use it just in case. Like here, we can just boost our shields and not have to even worry about having to uh, switch over to uh, or running out of capacitor for like seven good whole seven minutes. I guess uh, having not, not to worry about your capacitor for three minutes and fifty seconds is also not a long time. But still, I think that time can go pretty quickly when you're up against very uh, big uh, NPC waves. But then again, you would be tanking more so if you've got damage control, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Depends what kind of... Uh, I think it depends a bit on the kind of mission you're up against. If it's a very quick but intense wave, a damage control will probably be better. If it's a very long and drawn out wave, then probably better with... Uh, uh, with more cap stability. Same thing with Triglavian hunting as well. When you're doing that, you want to uh, focus a lot on having cap stability because I know I'm going to have to face NPCs for a long time in very big death waves. So I just want to make sure that I'm able to tank for an extended period of time because if I'm not, uh, then that's when our ship goes down because we can't use our tank. No capacitor means no tank, and no tank means dead. Okay. It's got a bunch of these little frigates now that they're the ones left. And I think, to be honest, we will be able to take them very quickly if we switch over to the Kaldari Navy. 
dual target painters should do the trick. It will go a little bit slower, a lot of damage will be mitigated percentage wise compared to the other guest cruisers and battle cruisers and battleships. But I think it should be alright. And this would be a lot quicker if we were to use something, say uh, the Vesper 2s. Vesper 2s I think would do a lot of benefits to us because it would help taking out these guys go a lot quicker. Yeah, let's see how this goes. Let's, we'll try first with Fury, see how uh, well the application is there. Then we can switch over to uh, the Kaldari Navy. I don't have actually Kaldari Navy explosive missiles. I probably should have packed those. I've got a lot of different damage types here just in case. And I got uh, I find that the two most common damage types are using emissions of kinetic and EM, but then also explosive. And I packed explosive Nova Furies or, or explosive Furies, but I didn't pack the faction explosives. Okay, so you can see that it's not much application that's going on. So we'll switch over to Kaldari Navy Scourge, because Scourge or kinetic damage is the second highest damage type against these frigates. Okay, these angels. That's aligned to Ian Orsta, because that is where the mission hub is. Yeah, so see, even though we're doing quite a bit less damage, 645, okay, it's not a whole lot less, 645, we're doing almost double the amount of damage just because of the increased application of these uh, faction-based cruise missiles. And I don't even think we're going to have to destroy every single one of them, I think we're just going to have to destroy the ones that are from that group. But since we were silly and mixed them up, <laughs> we can't uh, really do, do much about that. Uh, an option to, be, uh, to improve tank would be, actually, is to add an MW uh, an MJD. An MJD micro jump drive is going to be uh, very good for just clear, increasing that distance very quickly. Uh, the, th the problem is that but in doing that we will nerf our tank substantially but it could also be beneficial because I don't know I mean removing one of these multi-spectrum shield hardeners is going to make a big difference to how uh, how well we tank but it's going to be really beneficial in just uh, avoiding damage altogether but we've got mwd we can always move around you know move around it's good but like say we the second we start taking oh i'm taking a lot of damage now i just click the mjd and i'm out it's it's not more more complicated than that so in a way it would be very very safe to use a micro jump drive large micro jump drive uh, we would have a lot less tank but i think that it could be an option it could be an option because we will have paper thin tank here and in a way, I think it could be uh, even more reason to put a damage control here, so that we have a bigger buffer. But then we just uh, we just pull the range whenever we need to, and then it should be all right. It should be all right, actually. Uh, an option could be is to remove the shield boost and put passive tank. That could also be something to do. But to be honest, I think the shield boost it can be good in a way, in that we just have a nice little burst. A little burst of tank in the, in the instance we take damage and then uh, when then as soon as we can we just MJD out so we have enough to survive it doesn't have to be so cap stable but then again I think that it could also be a good idea to go with passive tank because if we have a big buffer as soon as we're, we're able to use the MJD it's just as long as we have enough buff to survive that little time it takes for us to use our MJD then it should be all right so that that would also be pretty cool. I like to have the MWD though. I don't want to remove this. Either I have both or just the MWD. Because this is very great for allowing us to move around. Because even though uh, like an MJD is good because it allows you to just jump an instant 100 kilometers. But the thing is it's not so precise. So you're going to be uh, having to like, still have to travel a bit if you don't jump perfectly on the gate. And that's many times not going to happen if... If you are like warped into the wrong location, or you've you just not perfectly aligned there because of the mission being constructed that way, hmm. But we can check here. How much tank would we have if we were to have an MJD? We can put an MJD micro jump drive. Pass it. It's twelve forty-three k. Let's say we were to go full passive. We'll be cap stable just about with uh, everything off and just the multi-spectrum one problem is we've got these two capacitor control circuits so these are actually going to make it so that we're not cap stable with the MWD on and it would be nice to be able to be cap stable with this just because this is a nice thing to have uh, to be able to move around with this. so that is a bit annoying large shield extender and then damage control damage control lux coil uh, or the 
shield flux core improves our shield HP per second. Does this remove our total buffer? Yeah, oh, it reduces our total buffer, okay. So then what would we want to put there? The uh, shield power relay nerfs our, uh, sh uh, our capacitor, actually. That's going to make it even more difficult to use our MWD to use it. We're going to use it for four seconds. Field extender. This does increase the price because these rigs are very pricey, but 108k buff is no joke. Hmm. I'm not sure. It seems cheaper and just a little bit more functional to be able to go with active tank because then we can use the MWD to go everywhere. Okay, let's hand in that mission. Okay, so Raven doing L4 missions. It went really smoothly and I can see why a lot of people like it. This is a very simple ship to use. You just keep at range and use uh, the cruise missiles to just rain hell on your enemies. And it's very safe as well because when you're just at such long range, then you don't have to at all worry about taking damage. And it's also it's pretty speedy, like 1k a second with an MWD is pretty good. And then it's also got okay, okay tank. It's not got the best tank in the world, but you don't have to worry about tank when you're too far away. And it does decent damage and the velocity bonus to the missiles makes it feel like the missile hit almost straight away or very quickly at least and plus you can do all different damage types so you can do even though maybe you don't do the most amount of damage you're always doing the more you're, you're like fully utilizing your damage because you're able to do against angels explosive against the blood raiders ehem so in a way you're probably doing more like the same amount of damage as something with like 1k dps just that you're able to use it more efficiently so maybe something with this what 1k dps such as a i know i have an apocalypse maybe it's not going to always be able to do that to angels for example and you're going to be able to do that to angels so I definitely see why people like this. It's a very good ship and very simple, very easy, and it's also not particularly expensive too. So I'm not surprised that a lot of people have this as the goals for one of the L4 mission ships. It's more expensive than a Praxis, but I can see the benefit of this having more missile bonuses. And also, if you've got Kaldari skills trained, you're making your way towards, for example, a Golem. This could be like a good stepping stone. I think it also looks like a pretty cool ship too. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Raven L4 mission is a pretty cool ship. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.